I'm cleaning these parts. Yeah, there's a few droplets of water on there because I forgot that I wasn't uh, recording and so I am now. Uh, so you see reflection of the light up here on on this. It's all shiny. I got to break that glaze off of there. And I'll show you how I'm doing that. And when I'm done, it looks like this. And I got to really watch in these inside corners and on the edges. I got to make sure I get that as much as possible. I got to do it on every piece. So, first thing I did was just for my own uh, pleasure, I I scrub brushed the inside, got all the dust out of it. I took two different kinds of brushes. This one that gets down in the corners and stuff like that. So the inside's clean. Now I'm going to start on the outside. Put find the best way to put this in here. I'm going to use a kitchen scotch bright that's about half wore out. I'm going to use that to get the um, any wax or oil or anything from the street that's on it. I'm just going to do this one spot for the video and then I'll finish it. And then I've got a sanding block here in case with some real fine sandpaper on it, just in case I have some rough spots someplace. I did on another piece. Now I'm using an ultra fine uh, scrubbing pad or scuffing pad. And so I'm going to use my fingertips and get down in these corners. because that's where the paint will want to peel off is on the edges so you got the edges you got to pay pretty close attention to that especially if it's exposed to wind or a pressure hose if you're going to pressure wash the thing or something like that which is maybe not be a good idea because you might knock the parts off of it and then they'll fly across the driveway and get broken And I personally, just my preference, I think it's a good idea to try to maintain your your movement in just a, the direction of airflow. Not that airflow has anything to do with it. It's just that that means that the parts are going to be mounted like this. And I just think it's, I'd rather have it instead of some this way and some that way and some circles I just my personal preference it probably doesn't really really matter it's just I just like to keep the direction of flow that way because that's the direction the thing goes there that's what we're looking for every piece that's going to be painted needs to oops I'm not done scrubbing that every piece needs to be done that way Using a red scuff pad and warm water and just a little bit of soap. Soap helps keep the, the water on the part. As well as help remove any oil and wax if there is any on there. These parts are already pre-washed pretty good a couple weeks ago, but I'm gonna uh, Scuff them up so that the paint will bite into it a little better. I just sanded this thing down with a by hand with a used piece of 360 and um, had enough abrasive left on it to do this. But I gotta be very sure that I do the the prep's all really good because of these cracks, this imitation vinyl um, imitation pattern that it has, those cracks down in there. 
it's going to be hard to get any waxes or, or grease or whatever that might have gotten in there. It's going to be hard to get that off. I didn't really polish this thing with wax when I was driving it. I did polish it with uh, something like Armor All uh, upholstery uh, stuff that you put on that. I could take these little rubber tits out that the fuel door closes on but I decided that they're so little nobody's going to see it. This is my bike. It's it's nothing special. It's just I'm tired of it not having any shine and so I'm just doing a winter project on it doing a partial body restoration not not a hundred percent just doing some. This is the prep saw that I have. Um, and I'm glad I found it because when I went to buy a new bottle, this is not prep saw brand, but it's same thing, wax and grease remover. I went to buy a new bottle because I had lost this. I thought I had some, but I couldn't find it and it was eighty seven dollars and so I was going to work without it I was going to find some other way to clean this stuff off with like reducer or something and uh, I wasn't going to pay that for it and then I found this I thought I had some I just had misplaced it which is easy to do in my shop because the building is just not that big I'm treating these metal parts. This purple stain on here is from this um, this rust treatment, this Permatex rust treatment number 81849. And that's what you want to use on on surface rust. I took my scraper and got the worst of it off inside and out, both sides and took a DA sander with a piece of, I think it's got a used piece of 180 on there, I don't remember what number it is, let me see, yeah it's got some 180 on it, and um, I just stuck a used piece on there, I didn't need it that coarse, a piece of 220 or 240 would be fine, and just kind of knocked all the loose stuff off, feathered the paint out just a little bit so that this rust treatment can get on all of the rust and um, seal it so that I can um, paint over this. These little metal panels go underneath the bike. They're on each side but they're almost underneath it so it doesn't need a good paint job but I don't want them to rust out any more than they have and they are a brown color but I was wondering about just leaving them brown and not painting that since I'm going with blue I thought well you really can't see them hardly without getting on your knees and looking under there but they're rusting out and I don't want them to rust anymore so I'm going on and doing that but there's four of those there's five of those one of them I cannot get off it's a little tiny one on the left side and I cannot get it off uh, because the uh, the bolt is, is rusted in such a way that it's not going to come out without breaking so I'm leaving that one I'll just uh, hand buff it a little bit and uh, and spray down there so what I've been doing is just running the DA this one this piece here has some scratches on it uh, you can see these lines so got most of these little blisters off that I could get with the with the scraper and once again this being underneath the bike I really don't worry too much about the appearance it's a little bit sticky because I already treated the inside of it so I gotta hold this out here and not hit my thumb with the DA I had already
already done most of it and then where I can't get to with the DA I'm just kind of taking a piece a corner piece of sandpaper off a, a corner of a uh, of a sanding uh, one of those long sandpapers you use on a on a body file sometimes it's hard to get right next to a hole or an edge because it wants to catch on there see how it's torn the paper here because it kind of got caught on the hole there so fortunately you don't need to do this part real neat just enough to hold some paint nobody's going to be down there looking at it And this dries to a sandable primer. So that piece is ready to set up for a day. It has to sit for, they say, 24 hours. I guess if it's warm enough, you can probably get away with 12, 16 hours. And if it's real cold, uh, then you probably need to wait a couple days. But I'm going to. Let this sit in the heated garage till I'm done working today. Then I'll bring it in the house so I can turn the heat off in the garage. Got a little scrape at the bottom of this trunk right here. I already got this piece of molding taped. I'm going to take the DA and kind of clean this up a little bit because this is visible. perfect but saved me from having an obvious scar there I don't think this bike has ever been wrecked but there are signs that it has fallen over on the left side I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down with uh, wax and grease remover I've already taped the seam or the um, the gasket inside the box here and I'm going to paint it with the door on it here yeah I'll just leave it a jar like that and then just paint inside here all the way around when I paint the top part so I'm going ahead and, and wipe it down with the um, the prep saw. I tried to find out how to get this mirror out of this mirror housing and come to the conclusion that the glass mirror is glued into this swivel adjustable part in here and the only way to get it out is to break the glass out of there so in order to paint inside of it I'll have to mask this all the way around as much as I can just keep adjusting it so I can get at it at the edge of it now I can get a new set of chrome imitation chrome covered mirrors for 90 bucks 
but I don't know if they are the same quality as OEM. I kind of doubt it. They might be, but I kind of doubt it. I'll just have to turn the paint gun down real low and then paint down inside this area in here and um, all the way around keep pushing this down and paint inside all of that